How many hits are we going to have without getting a fish today? Got that one. What's going on you crazies? Welcome back to another episode of Bee Fishing. We've got a nice little river here. It connects. We're going to go up this creek. I got my boy Justin out there in the water. And uh, today is going to be all about, for me, top water. I'm probably going to throw a couple other things, but the goal is to get that top water blow up on the Boom Boom Frog that came in April's Mystery Tackle Box. You know, it's the one with the Velcro on the back that's supposed to help your hookup ratio. We're going to test that today. A lot of lily pads, a lot of vegetation back there. We got the cabbage in the back of this, this creek back here. So we're going to go out there. We're going to see if we can't do it. Stay tuned. Let's go. talk about a couple things we got some fish moving right here we're looking for these little open areas not in the heavy heavy vegetation the fish have to be able to see the water we do have some of these areas that's a uh, tip number one on this top water game you need to look for some of these little open spots tip number two equipment okay equipment's gonna be a big factor so I've got 65 pound braid um, on a heavy action rod, 7.3 heavy action rod. Uh, this reel is a 7.6 to one, so high gear ratio, uh, because you're gonna wanna yank them out of there quick, okay? Because all these lilies are gonna get tied up, wrapped up. The line's gonna give me that strength to pull them out. The rod's gonna give me the backbone to yank them out, and the reel's gonna let me get them out fast. Number two, or number three on your tip, I've got a little bit of a different length on the tail there if y'all can see that or the uh, the legs i cut that because it helps with walking the dog action and if you've already cut yours and you want to even them or to do them like this that string is all together so you can actually pull on it and offset them um, i sometimes will straighten them back up uh, but there there's a couple tips for the day on how to do this frog game this top water game that's what we're about to get into right now one other little tip you don't have to keep him moving. When you hit that open, little opening in the water there, you can actually let him sit just for a second. Let the fish get a little bit of a look at him. Um, that'll usually draw your bigger fish in. It's not like I'm gonna pop him. I don't know that y'all can have a really good view, but I'm gonna pop him. When I hit an opening, I'm just gonna let him sit and float just for a second. Oh, gosh. Oh, man. I know that. I'll let him have it for a quarter of a second. Also, fish are going to miss. It's just the nature of top water. And as terrible as it sounds, you got to be a little bit more patient than I just was. This is so much easier said than done. When a fish hits like that, you hear it and your instinct is just a rip back, but you really need to count at least one second in your head, just one, then set the hook. Let them get it in their mouth. How many hits are we gonna have without getting a fish today? That's four right now. These fish have the glaucoma. Got that one. Let's try to yank him out of there. He may still be on or he might have gotten off. Oh, we got problems, guys. That's not a bass. It's a gar. Oh, 
How in the world do you hook a gar on a frog? Now this, my friends, is a toothy critter. And I don't quite know how we're gonna do this. Yeah, I may need help. But I got him right through the top of the nose. I mean, look where I hooked him. That's gonna be a tough one. He's got lots of teeth. He's got a ton of teeth. Mr. Marine over here. We'll see if we can't get him out. The only reason, oof. He ain't happy with you. Yeah, well, he's a moron. He's out here eating frog lures. That's a pretty decent sized gar, folks. <laughs> Not a bad move there, Justin. He didn't like that. No, he did not. That's not a bad move you just did there. I'm gonna try that. Give me just a just a just a moment. I got actually I got an idea. He is pissed. He's very pissed. What? That's genius. He ain't gonna be happy. How about that, folks? Toothy critter on the frog. On the boom boom frog. Can y'all believe that? Look at that gar. That's actually a decent sized gar right there. Yeah, that ain't half bad. Nuh-uh. For a frog. Hooked him right through the top of the nose. I don't know if y'all can see that. Right through the top of the nose. We're gonna let this one go. Oh, that's actually on there pretty damn good. I can live with that. All right, later. I ain't never. I have not ever. I think I know why he kept missing that one. That one missed it three times before I finally got him. Yeah. Wrong species. That's why I missed. All right, let's rig up a worm here. Let's uh, let's do that. We're going to go with our own watermelon red here. House blend. That's what we're going with. Going with the old house blend. Y'all didn't know we make our own worms. Welcome everybody that's new to the channel. We make our own worms. This is a finesse six inch finesse worm in watermelon red. It's got a little bit of garlic smell to it. You can see those little black dots, all those little red flake. Nice watermelon green color. Oh man, that looks good. A good natural look. Justin's hooked up again. The worm is what seems to be working. That's a nice fish. You want me to come over and get a picture? Sure. All right. All right, I'll get you some of those. It's a good looking fish. See you later, buddy. Justin's about to drop some education here. Let's listen. You gotta think of it kind of like, kind of the same thing on a lake, like where a creek feeds in. Okay. Right? So out in the middle, it's obviously deep. That's yep. where the main creek runs through. You want to throw directly center off of this little slough area because mm -hmm. I mean it gets pretty shallow right about where it spreads open right here. So we're trying to find the ledge. Yes. Okay. Sweet. That makes um, sense. So you were just right fishing that ledge, just yeah, pulling up. Right in the center right there. Right about where it starts getting, I don't know, I don't know how deep it is. But Not deep. Not to completely cut your path off, but we're talking, if I cast it right here, about halfway, I'd probably start coming up off that ledge. Yeah. Okay. See, dropping knowledge. If I don't know it, I bring someone who does. Got him. Got him. Oh. He's, he's almost gut hooked. I probably should have set him a little earlier. Almost got hooked. I finally got the desired species. All right, there you go. Nice little bass fish on the bee fishing worm, CB baits. We're gonna let this sucker go. Later, dude. We're gonna swap it up and throw a little red bug. Really, the only reason I'm swapping it up is so I can go to a curly tail.
This isn't going to be fun if this is the way it's going to be. Oh, that's a fish. Hit it on the fall. Oh, my goodness. What do we got? What do we got? Pulling me around. It's got to be pretty good. Oh, yeah. I think it's a good one. It's just a bass. He might be gut hooked. Nope. Not gut hooked. There we go. That's a pretty decent little fish right there. Stop it. On the fall, you were on that tree. Nowhere, that's a nice little fish right there. I wonder what you weigh. Let, let us find out. Two pounds, three ounces. That's not a bad little fish. There you go, folks. That is a nice little river bass on the red bug worm. Good little fish, good healthy fish. There she goes. Nice, easy, smooth release. Chalk another one up. That's uh, three fish for the day, two bass, which are the desired species, and then that one gar on a, worm, on a, a frog. That one was weird. So, I like pitching a, uh, a curly tail worm when you're around structure like stand up sticks down trees um, because as it falls those fish are suspended on that structure and that tail gives it a flutter all the way down i really wish i had more of a natural color like a watermelon red um, or like a green pumpkin something along those lines I, I my favorite's watermelon red if you haven't noticed my favorite color worm is watermelon red because um, it's got a little bit of that red in it that they look for like in a crawfish but it's a natural colored worm um, but these curl tails are the bomb when you get on structure and you're trying to get that bait to fall. It just gives it a little bit of a, a kick as it goes down. Fish go nuts for it. I also like doing that on a Carolina rig as well because as you pop it and it's sitting there flowing through the water, it gives it a flutter um, on a Carolina rig. Just again, personal preference. Everybody fishes different. Um, there is no wrong or right weight. Well, there is a wrong way to fish, uh, but everybody's got their own style and confidence is a big factor in that but when I get around these sticks these down trees anything that I know fish are gonna be suspended on I want to have something flutter past them a jig would do the same thing with little kicker tails as it goes down but this on a worm gives it a flutter on a, on a u-tail is what this is it's a zoom u-tail in red bug again I wish I had watermelon red in it but I did not pack that I thought I did but I didn't How about that? On the fall, little guy came out and swooped it. All right, so this was supposed to be a full topwater video, but this turned into a little bit of a uh, worm fishing video, pitching into cover. I thought that was a terrible pitch. I'm sure y'all did too. So there you go, we got another little largey. Uh, this one probably is a pound and a half. If I had to guess, I'm not gonna weigh him. Uh, obviously not the biggest one in the bunch. But there you go. We got three largemouth now with that one gar on a frog. I mean, that's crazy. We're going to let this little guy go again. Uh, there he's off. I mean, come on now. We're, we're, uh, we're working on getting that up. He just danced for us. Just, I don't know if y'all saw that. He just freaking jumped into the water danced for us. What a crazy little day. So the worms definitely showed out. We technically did accomplish the goal, which was to catch a fish on the uh, Boom Boom Frog that we got Mystery Tackle Box's April box. Um, didn't expect it to be a gar though. And how about the way I hooked him? I mean, perfect hook set right through the top of the mouth. Um, and those things are hard to hook. So I'm kind of I'm kind of impressed that those hooks are that sharp to, to puncture. I mean, that's pretty much bone up through there, really hard cartilage at least. It was a fun day, and then the old worms showed out. You can't, I mean, I love a good topwater bite. Don't get me wrong, I absolutely love a topwater bite, but something about fishing the worms in the dead of summer um, with a little bit of a breeze blowing, especially when they hit it on the fall and you ain't got to sit there and work it so much. You pick your high percentage areas and you land the fish. Um, anyway, that's gonna do it for today's video. Guys, I hope you enjoyed it. If you're new um, and you haven't ever seen the channel before, go and peruse around. 
But by all means, hit the red subscribe button down below and hit the ding dong notifications next to it. All you gotta do is turn that little red box that says subscribe gray. Um, if you like the video and you like the content here, go ahead and smash that thumbs up. Let's me know I'm doing a good job on these videos. Leave me a comment below. What is the strangest thing you have caught that was unintended? What, what have you caught that you were actually fishing for bass or fishing for bluegill and caught something random? Let me know in the comments. I'd love to know it. And uh, as always, I love each and every one of you. Y'all are the best group of subscribers. I know other channels say it, but I, I know it to be true. It's on my channel, the BFF, the Bee Fishing Family. Um, Y'all are the absolute greatest. And I love each and every one of you. And we'll catch you on the next one. Later.